Hello everybody and welcome to this video of myself and Simon Bates. Hello. And we are here to give you a fairly extensive, uh, informative, hopefully, uh, view of what to look at and which models to look at if you're in the market for a student alto saxophone. So we should probably just define what we're going to do. Uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about why you should look for certain things when you're buying a student sax and if you're a child or if you're a parent buying for a child or if indeed you're an adult who wants to start out. And then we're gonna just walk through the main three or four models that are out there on the market and why we at Dorks choose to stock those and what that means to you as the player and or as the buyer. Okay, so we're gonna get into all of that in just a sec. Simon obviously is a professional musician and he is here to offer his opinion from a playing point of view and just from an experience of teaching and, and being on the scene, so to speak. So I think just Simon, when you're starting out, what's you know, what are some of the most important factors you've got to look for in an instrument to, to bear in mind if you're a buyer? I, I think you need something that's, that's easy to play. You don't want to struggle with the saxophone. Um, you need to make sure that the, the, the key work is sealing nicely. Whether it's a new saxophone or a second-hand saxophone, it, it needs to work. Um, everything needs to work in it. Uh, you need to make sure that it's comfortable to, to, to play, that the, the, the fingers um, fall on the key work. Because, you know, I've got quite large hands, Younger players will, will obviously need, need something which is a, a little more tight ergonomically. Um, but just because it's a student saxophone doesn't mean that it's going to be a younger player. Um, you, you might get, obviously, older players mm. who are picking up a saxophone for the, for the first time. I know quite a few people, in fact, in retirement who've decided to learn the saxophone. So, you know, it, we, we, we're not always talking about younger musicians here. No, absolutely. There is a balance. And generally, the student saxophones, quote-unquote, are designed to suit new players, whether they are older or younger, but there are some which are more geared to the younger people, and we're gonna to get to those a little bit later in the video, and at the beginning, there's things we're gonna talk about are kind of suitable for everyone. So I suppose what do we mean when we say student? Obviously, people think about that from a price point. Uh, they're usually sub 1,000 pounds, for sure, and they can start from as little as a couple of hundred out there in the market, but I'm gonna just stick my neck out and say something a little bit bold. Essentially, if it's less than about 400 quid, it's probably not worth buying. And that might yeah, seem agree. a little bit controversial, <laughs> but there's a reason. Look, there's over 300 bits on this saxophone. And to make that in any coherent way that is going to be helpful and reliable and make an instrument that's easy to play and in tune and all the other things that Simon's mentioned that you need, it costs a certain amount of money and it takes a certain amount of time. And the materials, if you're going to have proper uh, brass and everything else on there, cost a certain amount as well. And fundamentally, in my opinion, having done this for nearly 20 years of selling, repairing, making, all sorts of things, it's basically impossible to get anything worth having below a certain price point, okay? Yeah. So there is an investment required, and that might mean buying new, which obviously we do at Dorks. It might mean renting. You know, we rent saxophones at uh, £30 a month at the moment. You can rent an alto saxophone of a, and a Yamaha at that, so one of the best quality ones. Mm -hmm. So student horns tend to be designed for beginners. They may not have all the bells and whistles with engraving and all this sort of stuff, uh, but they are there to help you play and help you start out. So let's get into the actual models. And we're gonna start with the Yamaha YAS280. Now, this is, in our opinion, um, from the point of view of experience of how things are put together and how they play, this is the number one student alto saxophone that money can buy. Now, it does also happen to be the most expensive, unfortunately, for you. But, as with everything in life, commonly you get a little bit, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Well, personally, I'd say this is worth the investment. Yeah. Really and is. why is it a bit more expensive than some of the other things on the market? There's a sensible question. And it's all to do with quality. Quality of materials, quality of design, before you even start putting the thing together. Why is it made in a particular way? What are the dimensions throughout it? Will that play in tune? Do the company that's making the instrument have enough knowledge to understand why that is? Or are they just copying other things but not really understanding what they're copying and why? Yeah. And the Yamaha is definitely, definitely, definitely the market leader in terms of uh, investment in re um, you know, research and design and in terms of actually, and I'm going to say this, 
responsibly manufacturing. So that means factories that are responsible about their output, about how they deal with waste, about who they employ, how old those people they employ are, how they pay those people, and, and everything else. And it's, it's a thing we don't talk about enough. You know, the solder is lead-free, for example, on this. And, and there's lots of things out there on the market where you probably wouldn't want to know about how they've got to you at that price. <laughs> and, it, you know, we laugh, Very but... Very true, yeah, yeah. It, mm. There's a reason it can be that cheap, and the reason is probably reasons you don't want to... you wouldn't like. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not trying to scare monger, but it's absolutely the truth. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I'm sure you have, but I've seen these saxophones being built over in Japan, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, they're, they're crafted, not built. Yes. You know, it, it, it is a, a real artisan industry making musical instruments. Yeah. So. And Yamaha aren't, aren't the only ones. There's lots of good brands out there making saxophones and all other instruments, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that further in the in the chat today. But we think the Yamaha is the best place to start. Why? Because it's the easiest, it's the most reliable, it makes the best sound, it's the best intonation, it'll last the longest, it'll be worth the most if you do ever want to sell it. And so it might feel a bit expensive, but there are other ways. You can buy it with us through finance, you know, over a year and it's 0%. You can buy it outright, you can rent one from us, you can sometimes pick them up pre-owned from us as well. So if you can do it, do it. It's the number one place to start. And Simon, maybe, Let's just have a little play on that. Okay. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move on from the Yamaha. Uh, we've done a separate video about it, which you can see where we go into it in more depth. But we'll move on from the Yamaha after that into the Jupiter, which is probably number two in the, in the list of things to look at. <laughs> Okay, so we're back and we've, we've talked about the Yamaha there being our number one choice and I think that's um, fairly straightforward about the reasons why and we've talked about that. So, moving on. If, if you are a little bit stuck on budget or if for some reason you don't want to go for the Yamaha, uh, for another reason, uh, Jupiter is another option that is slightly cheaper. It, they've been around a long time, the manufacturing is of very high quality, the factory is a very high quality, responsible manufacturer. And for us uh, at Dorks, it's definitely the, the, the next best thing on the Yamaha, let's mm -hmm. just say that. And so, again, you might find one pre-owned, you know, from us checked, or a new one, whatever you want to do. So, Simon, just from a plain point of view, the, the Jupiters are fairly vibrant, aren't they? Yeah. Maybe a little, not quite as refined as the Yamaha in terms of its flexibility of tone, maybe. But that's, we're really picking here because it's still a way level above lots of the cheap, cheap things that are out on the market. Yes. I mean, for me, the, the Yamaha feels a, a better saxophone. Um, obviously, you know, I have, have played this, but you haven't heard me play it yet. Um, there are some great features on it that, that aren't on the Yamaha. You know, there's a nice link there between the, uh, the D flat key and the B flat key, which, which the Yamaha doesn't have. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a bad saxophone at all. Yeah. You know. So I think if we best of the rest might be the best way to put it, mm. without it and, and that's in a positive way, absolutely. But let's have a little listen, Simon. Uh, just to point out again, like uh, the Yamaha, it comes with a nice student mouthpiece, which is 4C design, which is easy to play, it comes with a nice case, all that kind of usual good stuff, and we set them all up before they come out to you. But let's just have a little listen. <laughs> Okay, so that was the Jupiter, and uh, like we say, nice blowing instrument, definitely another consideration, a bit cheaper than the Yamaha. We're going to jump now a little bit lower down in price. This is the Wincraft WAS 110, and this instrument was designed very much to compete in that budget sort of price zone. So we're fully aware that there's a, a big market out there. Um, maybe you can't quite stretch the Yamaha, you don't feel like you're ready to spend that sort of money for a, a new player, although there's ways to put that aside with rental or we offer a buyback and all this sort of stuff. But let's just say, whatever the reason, you want to just come in a little bit cheaper, or quite a bit cheaper, a few hundred pounds, let's not, mm -hmm. you know, let's not mess about. It's a difference in price. 
there are a level of instruments that maybe will still be good to start on, won't last you as long uh, in terms of you would need to upgrade them sooner. And I think that's one of the big reasons about you know, uh, longevity you need to think about. But if you are on that uh, price point, then in our opinion, this is definitely the safest uh, place to be from a financial point of view because the Wincrafts are designed to be easy to play. They are aimed at younger players. And we talked about this at the top of the show. Yeah, you indeed. can play it as an adult. You could start on one, but it's really designed for the small hands of a younger player. And Absolutely. That, yeah, yeah. that means it's more mm. compact and that's there sort of on purpose. Um, now, reliability-wise, we set them all up like we do any of the other brands and you get a five-year warranty with these as well. And we're also very careful about where we source the Wincraft models from. So you have all of our backing and all of the manufacturing backing behind that. Spare parts, resale value, a guaranteed buyback should you not want to use it or should you upgrade something else. And those are the things to think about if you're looking at uh, the brands that are outside the main, uh, the main thoroughfare, should we say. Think about all those other things about the purchase. You know, what, what's the retailer doing for you? Are they setting them up? Uh, is there spare parts available? Will they buy it back off you? What will you do with it if it needs repair? You know, all the boring things That's so important. that you find out yeah, a year yeah. later and you mm. wish you'd thought about beforehand. Yeah, no, it is really important. Um, but Simon, you, you've played the Wincraft before and I know yeah. it, it probably feels a bit small for you for the reasons that we've just talked about. Yes, it but does, if I'm honest. Yeah. In terms mm. of those, you know, more affordable, that budget end of the market, do you feel that, you know, it's still giving the player a... A great start and a, a decent sound. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's, it, it, we do know it's a, it, it's a cheaper saxophone, but it, it does feel good. There's, there's, some, there's definitely some quality there. There's some features that even the Yamaha doesn't have, like the, the D-flat to B-flat uh, link lever uh, thing, which, which helps you slide from the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the keys. Um, yeah, everything's there. It's, it's a good saxophone. It's got all the, the, the key work. It's got all the intonation that you'd expect from a saxophone. Um, for me, perhaps the Yamaha particularly has, 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 has got more oomph to it. Mm. But, you know, do you need that if you're a beginner? I don't know. Well, it's I would. And it's, <laughs> and it's twice as much. And that's the mm. thing. We have to be respectful of the fact there are different budgets in play here. So uh, let's have a little listen to this. And then we're going to get to something which is totally different and really just designed for very young players and we'll explain about that as well. Okay, so that was the Wincraft, and as we've said, that's probably our number three choice in terms of going down from a pricing point of view. Uh, and a lot of people actually decide that I'm either going to go for it, I'm going to get the Yamaha, or I'm a bit worried it's a seven-year-old, do I know if they're going to like it or not, or I'm not sure I've got the time, blah, blah, blah. And then my suggestion would be go for the Wincraft. The middle is sort of a grey area, you're not really doing one mm. or the other. So yeah. kind of go one way or the other, is my opinion. But uh, up next, we've got something a little bit different. Now this is a Trevor James Alpha saxophone, and it's designed very, very much for young players who wouldn't be able to cope with the weight and the physical layout of a standard student saxophone. So if you're an adult, this is not going to be for you. But if you're buying for a very young player, this might be worth considering if you've checked that out with your teacher. And we've done a separate video uh, we have, yeah. about this where we explain why it's different. So it's missing certain keys and that helps the weight reduce by about 25%. So if you check out the video, that tells you all the keys that are missing, why they're missing and, <laughs> and what it does do instead. Um, but for now, in terms of it being an option for you, price-wise it sits between the Wincraft and the Yamaha. So I think it's only really in play if you've got a very young player who doesn't want to play clarinet or flute instead. They really, really want to go on a saxophone and you've spoke to the teacher and they say, I know these, they're really good, I'm happy to start you on one. That's basically where this instrument comes in. Yeah, that's fair to say. they are beautifully made. You know, it's, it, it, attention to detail is, is, is extraordinary. Yeah, um, and it's a very interesting mm. design and it's very um, forward thinking of them to try and work out a way to make a saxophone that's still an E flat that kids could play, but that was a lot lighter and more reachable for the mm. hands as well. So, but like I say, the video we've done about that separately explains that in a lot more detail. But let's just have a little listen to this, Simon, because it's still a proper saxophone, right? Yeah, nearly. Yeah, again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so that's the Trevor James, and obviously, as you can hear, it sounds like a saxophone, uh, albeit with those slight differences. So I think just in conclusion, if we finish up, the main points we would want to kind of hope you take away. Stick to the big brands. There is a reason why they're the main brands. Uh, it doesn't just mean you're paying more for something. There's a lot going into the production quality, the design, the reliability, the sustainability and the resourcing of the actual materials is, is, a, is commonly more responsibly done, let's just mm -hmm. say that. And... Playing a saxophone should be fun. You know, you should want to pick it up. If, if it's you or if it's your child, giving them an instrument that is harder to play is not going to be cost efficient or fun in the long run. Uh, so as you know, Simon, uh, you've got to want to pick it up and blow it and practice mm. it. And if you practice hard enough, you'll sound like Simon. And if you practice really hard, you'll sound even better than Simon. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so hopefully that's covered it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, stay subscribed to the channel if you want more saxophone related news. And uh, if you have any queries at all about what to do, why to buy, which brands, get hold of us at Dorks and we will be able to help you with that. See you again soon.